Good morning, this is Mr. Pruden. Today we're talking about magnets and magnetism. So, uh, what is a magnet? A magnet is any object that has a magnetic field. And when we go out and we look at magnets, magnets come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. They can be bars or horseshoes, they can be round, uh, they can be electromagnets. Uh, they can be either naturally occurring, uh, like uh, many of the many of the iron magnets that you find or magnetite or something like that, or they can be man-made. They could be like an electromagnet or a superconducting magnet or something like that. Now, the first the first people that we know of that uh, really observed magnetic phenomena were the Greeks, uh, and they talked about these lodestones that they found. Uh, and lodestones were just rocks that were observed to attract uh, small pieces of iron. And then they would, uh, you know, they, they found they found that, you know, it's just like a basic magnet when you're a kid and you figure out that, you know, you can take the, you can take the magnet around and it makes little pieces of metal uh, come towards you and maybe even other magnets. And then, then what they also noticed, and this was even probably more important, was that whenever they <coughs> hung one of these, you know, put a little hole in one of these rocks and hung it from a string or something like that, that if they let them if they let them go they would basically turn and they would align themselves in the same direction and they would always align themselves um, multiple multiple stones multiple rocks would make would would become aligned uh, in the same direction and usually and that direction was north and south now the reason the lodestones point north and south is because they align themselves with the aristomagnetic field um, you you need to remember that the Earth itself acts as a giant dipole magnet uh, that has a that has a north end and a and a south end. Uh, what we call magnetic north, which is the direction that a lodestone or a compass would point to as north, is actually eleven and a half degrees off from the geographic north, which would be considered, you know, maybe the top of the wall, the top of the world, uh, and geographic south would be the bottom of the world. But you have to tilt that 11 and a half degrees to find the magnetic north and the magnetic south pole. So what's a dipole? Well, all magnets are dipoles. Uh, that just means that they have a north pole and a south pole. Uh, and we most easily see this in bar magnets. Uh, generally, generally with one side being north and south, and they're usually labeled like that. Uh, we can prove experimentally, and this is an experiment you should have done in about fourth or fifth grade, that opposite poles attract and like light poles repel. Basically, that's that that's that experiment or that activity you did where you where you pointed the ends of the magnets at each other and you saw if they stuck together or if they pushed each other apart. Now, this is very very similar to what we saw when we studied electrostatics and we talked about charges. Uh, remember that like charges repel each other, positive and positive, or negative and negative will repel each other, but a positive and a negative charge uh, will be attracted, much like a north and a south pole of a magnet. So is it possible to have a magnet with only one pole? Well, the short answer to that question is no. Okay, uh, in, in experiments where we have magnets that were cut in half, uh, the north end of the pieces always aligned to the north while the south end of the piece is always aligned to the south. So it was impossible to cut them in half and get a north magnet and a south magnet. Uh, every time we cut them apart uh, we ended up with a north and a south pole. And you could do this over and over and over again and you would still end up with a north and a south pole for your magnets. So uh, when we when we talk about magnet about magnets, a lot of times we talk about their magnetic fields, and, and magnetic. Remember that a, that a field is just some area in space that a, that a force can be exerted in. Uh, and so when we when we talk about a magnetic field, it's a it's some area in space that the magnet exerts exerts force on some other type of object, either either a charged particle or some kind of metal or something like that. Um, now. We usually draw these with, with what we call magnetic field lines, and magnetic field lines are lines along which a magnetic force is exerted. So, uh, basically, if you look at the top picture, what you're what you're seeing there, it's it's a little experiment that normally people do in around seventh or eighth grade, 
uh, with iron shavings and a magnet. And basically, what you do is you put the magnet down, and then you put a plate, of, you put a piece of paper above that, and then you you sprinkle out these iron shavings on it, and give it a little bit of a shake, and you get you get this you get this this design. It looks like, uh, but what what's really happening is that those is that those pieces of iron are aligning themselves. Uh, along the along the field lines for for these compasses along the north and south field lines, uh, and you notice that they're that they're circular and that they loop around. Well, just remember that the further away they get from the ends, the bigger uh, the well the closer they the closer they get to the middle, the smaller the loops are, and the closer to the ends, the larger the loops get until we get these uh, these really large uh, north and north and south loops. Now. When we take a compass and we place them along one of these field lines, uh, if we have them close, if we have them close to the magnet, uh, they're going to point in the direction of the north pole of the magnet, uh, which is which would be which would be fairly normal for them. Uh, field lines themselves, when we when we draw them, when we're trying to make a diagram of them, field lines are always drawn from the north pole to the south pole uh, because the north and south poles are attracted to each other. Now it's not shown on here, but if we had it, if we had two magnets, uh, our field lines would would look uh, somewhat different if they were close together. Because if you had a north and a south pole close together, uh, you might see attraction between the north the north pole of one magnet and the south pole of the other one. Or if you had had like uh, poles together, you might see a um, a repulsion or or lines of force that are drawn to show to show that they are that they are pushing against each other in opposite directions or that they are repelling each other. So what are magnets used for? Well, um, probably the earliest and still the most common use of magnets is to find direction. Uh, we use them we use them for compasses. Uh, there, you know, explorers have used compasses for for hundreds of years to find their way around. Uh, there's a whole sport that is uh, called orienteering that is uh, basically based, based on giving a person a starting point and a map and a compass and telling them to get to this to a, to another position uh, in the fastest manner possible. Uh, so so orienteering, uh, but basically we use them to find direction. The reason we can do that is because we know that that these that these magnetic the, the magnets will align themselves with the north and south pole. So we so we always have a reliable indicator of the of which direction is north and south. Uh, magnets are also used in medicine uh, to diagnose different things. Uh, those are called magnetic magnetic re resonance images. Uh, basically, basically what happens is that you have protons that are resonating in a magnetic field, uh, and then with some software they're able to look at and say, uh, see what's going on inside a person. Uh, the current the picture I have on here is an MRI of a person's brain, uh, but you. Many of you have seen have seen MRIs of people's knees or different things like that, so that they can, and they use these to to indicate where where there where there's injury or what what might be going on. Uh, another interesting use for magnets is that they're used for plasma containment uh, in nuclear fusion experiments. Uh, since there are not materials uh, on Earth that, that have a high enough melting point to withstand the temperatures of a nu of a true nuclear fusion. Uh, remember that these come, that these can come in at a, at 100 million degrees Celsius. Uh, then what we what we do to to try to contain those reactions is uh, is we use magnetic fields. Anyway, I hope this has been informative for you. Uh, and, and this is this is the basic. This is where we're starting our basics on. Uh, if you have any questions, please come and see me over the next couple of days. Thank you and bye.